Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you my LEGO Charizard mock and giving you a detailed look of the build including its features, posability, and some of the building techniques used. If you're interested in building this yourself, you can check the link in the description below for both the parts file and instructions which have been up on my store and the proceeds just help to support this channel for future mocks and builds. The total part count for this mock is 447 pieces and at the time of the recording this video it's estimated to cost around $75 to $85 Canadian since the build does use some uncommon and expensive parts. Please keep in mind this does not include shipping or handling and your final cost may vary. If you've been following me either on this channel and or on Instagram, you may remember when I first posted this build quite some time ago. It's been about 3 years since the mock design was first posted on my Instagram and I'm still surprised I was even able to design and build something like this back then. Once it was finally built, I was instantly brought back to being a kid and wishing that I had a toy like this growing up. I didn't grow up with the latest toys or games and had a very limited LEGO collection when I was a kid. But I remember seeing some stop motion videos and mocks from other builders and wondered how people had the time and money to build all of them. For the build itself, I think it's pretty simple overall and doesn't use that many crazy or advanced building techniques. But I think its main charm is in its shaping and color which I tried to be as accurate as I could. The overall design actually took a bit longer than some of my other mocks and it wasn't necessarily because it's a complex build, but it was since I thought why not try and design its shiny and mega x form as well, since most of the body doesn't really change much in between the forms. I figured it would be a simple color swap, so I tried to pick pieces that came in orange, dark bluish gray, and black since it's the main colors for the other forms. Having decided to take on this additional work, I knew I would have to try and design the regular one first since it seemed like orange was the more limiting part color in LEGO. There was a lot of going back and forth and checking the part catalog for the parts available in these colors, and I was lucky that there was enough pieces for all the other accent colors as well. Between the different forms, there were a few part swaps since not all parts came in each of the other colors, the overall look between is still pretty consistent. If you're interested in seeing the other two forms, I do plan to post reviews of them on this channel in the future, so stay tuned. Take a look at the arms, with the simplest part of the design, since they're pretty short and skinny in the official artwork. There's articulation at the shoulders, but just be careful as this connection point is pretty weak. Uh, you can rotate and bend the wrist, and open each of the fingers as well. Uh, only the elbows are fixed since they use this uh, angled Technic connector piece. And you'll notice that in the other two versions or forms that I swapped it out with the uh, hinge cylinder pieces with a Technic axle hole uh, since they come in dark bluish gray and black, which allows them to have uh, bendable elbows while keeping the same points of articulation. For the fingers, they use the cow horn piece in white, which is pretty expensive on BrickLink, so I recommend uh, buying them off the uh, LEGO Pick a Brick site instead. Since the shoulder connection is uh, pretty weak, if you want to change the position of the arm, I usually just take it off and pose it in the position I want and then reattach it back on since the shoulders do tend to pop off if you try and uh, change it while it's attached. For the legs, I knew I wanted to make them fairly wide and sturdy so it could support the weight of the entire mock. I played around with different looks and building techniques, but in most in-game models and sprites, it looks like the legs are usually squat, so I decided to have the knees be fixed at right angles. There's articulation at the hips and ankles, and since they use mix style ball joints, the range of motion is pretty wide, and you get a lot of posability out of them. With the added friction in these joints, you can lean the entire mock forward at a pretty low angle for some dramatic or uh, dynamic poses. Taking a closer look at the belly, like most of my other mocks, the interior is built with snot bricks and plates, with regular slopes, curved slopes, wedges and tiles attached on all sides to capture its shaping and form. Uh, in some of the reference material I searched, its belly looks to be more yellow, but it seemed too bright and loud in LEGO, so I chose the tan color instead since I thought it was a more accurate match when compared to the 3D models in game. Uh, I think most of the pieces in tan also come in yellow, so you could easily swap them out if you wanted to. Coming around to the back, there isn't much detail and I just tried to add some bulk where I could while also following the shaping and form from the front and sides while leaving space for the wings and tail to attach to. And I just tried to cover and smooth it off with curved slope and slopes and tiles wherever I could. Taking a closer look at the wings, they are built in two sections and I used the ratcheted hinge plate pieces to connect them since I was limited by the part selection, but they also hold this angle much better than bars and clips could. The interior wing color uses the dark teal or turquoise color in LEGO since I thought it was the best match, but some of the pieces used are quite rare or expensive so just pay attention to this when you're ordering the parts. Alternatively, I have seen other Charizard mocks and artwork where the wings look to be more dark blue instead, 
so you could swap the parts out for that color if it's more economical and or easier to source. The back of the wings aren't too special and have quite a lot of exposed studs but I decided not to smooth that out entirely since I thought it would have made the wings a bit too bulky. The tiles I did add however were supposed to resemble the skeletal frame underneath the wings and they help reinforce some of the connection points as well. The wings attach to the body with pixel style ball joints so there's a lot of posability at this point of articulation. You can even have the wings be straight out and make it look like it's flying or gliding in case you want to swish it around which I did when I first built this. Coming down to the tail, it's built in four sections and each are connected using mixed style ball joints so there's a wide range of motion in each section. I think if I had extras of the ratcheted hinge plates in orange, I would use them instead since the light and dark bluish gray pieces tend to break up the look of the tail a bit. Leaving them in, they do add more posability, but I think you only really need the base and maybe the end to be attached with the ball joint. If you look closely, each tail section tapers and becomes more narrow till you reach the end where I use the larger trans red flame blast piece to resemble its iconic flame which is just attached onto a larger cone piece. And you can rotate this flame just to change up the look if you wanted to. Looking at the head and neck, the neck is pretty simple in its design and is fixed to the body at this angle. It's built around some bracket pieces which, which lets me cover up all four sides giving that smooth and finished look. The head hover was one of the trickier parts to design since I knew if I couldn't capture its iconic facial details it would just throw off the entire mock. The base of the head uses studs on the side construction, and I was surprised I was able to capture this detail with pretty simple techniques used here. The horns at the back use this larger spike piece in orange, and this is one of the parts that is different in the other forms since this piece does not come in all the other colors. I was able to find some substitutes or tweak the design a bit, but I still think this piece is the best in terms of size and shape for capturing the horn. You can angle the horns to change up the facial expressions quite a bit as well. And you can open and close the jaw, but you can't close it fully since the uh, teeth, which uses the one by one pyramid slope pieces in white, uh, block it a bit. Uh, the entire head is attached using a mix of style ball joints, so you can get into a lot of different angles for uh, different poses. Finally, for those of you wondering, this is how it looks scaled up to a random minifigure. And my custom trainer figure mock, which is Pokemon Red, based off of his in-game appearance. So let me know down in the comments below your thoughts on this mock, as well as any ideas of what you want to see me build next, and I may just pick yours in a future video. I usually post all my mocks and designs on my Instagram first, but let me know if you'd like to see any progress or update videos on this channel as well. I also have a bunch of other uh, LEGO Pokemon mocks uploaded onto my channel already, so feel free to check them out, and a couple of them will be shown on screen shortly. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.